Here's a quick recap on percents, decimals, and fractions so everyone can stay on top of their chapter two lessons. So let's begin with an easy one. Here we have 30%. As we know, to make it a fraction, anything that is a percent is going to be over 100. So this is 30 over 100. And as I pointed out in an earlier video, that's because we can see the one, and then we can see the hundred. <laughs> and we can see that here as well. So we can see that, and that's an easy reminder for us to put it over 100. Now, we're not done yet. We do have to simplify. One easy way to simplify, there we go. Cross off the zeros. And that's all we can simplify. We can't divide it anymore. So we get our fraction to be 3 tenths. Now, there's two ways from here that we can go to get a decimal. The first way is from a fraction, we do long division. So we use our dividend 3, our divisor is 10. 10 can't go into 3, so we get a 0, which makes sense because our numerator is smaller. Then we put our next 0. 10 goes into 30 three times. That's 30. We get 0. Excellent. The other way that we can do it is simply with our percentage, in which case we move our decimal, and since we don't see one, that means it's always at the end, twice to the left. Two little bunny hops. So we get 0.3, or 0 0.3, which is exactly the same thing that we got here. So there's two different ways we can do it. However, the only thing we can do from fraction is long division, and the only thing we can do from a percent is move it the decimal over. Let's look at this next one, 2%. So it's a little different. However, it follows all of the same rules. This one is gonna be two over 100 because our percents are always over 100. Once again, we have to simplify and we get one over 50 when we divide by a common factor, the greatest common factor in this case. So once again, we can do it either of the two ways. 2%, we move our decimal over, we move it 1, 2. So it becomes 0 0.02. Or we can do our long division, which looks like it'll take a while, but it really won't. We have 50 goes into 1, 0 times. Then we put our decimal, we follow it up. 50 goes into 10, 0 times. Another one, 50 goes into 100, 2 times. And that's 100, we get 0. And as we can see, same exact thing. So all of these mean the same thing. We'll look at this one now. So we've got 0.05%. This is less than one, but yet it still follows the same rules. So as a fraction, it would be 0.05 over 100. We don't put it over anything else. It's always over that 100. However, we can't have a decimal in the fraction. It's kind of the point of fractions. So we have to move it over one, two. We move it over until it gets to the end. It's not always two, could be seven, could be a hundred, doesn't matter. But what we do to the top, we do to the bottom. So we move it over one, two. In which case, we then get five over 10,000. In the same scenario, we do have to simplify it again which would give us one over 2,000. Excellent. Now, like I said, there's several ways we can do it. There's the whole long division way, which is just gonna be really complicated. Essentially what we get, we can see this here, we need it to be one, two, three, four in order for our 2,000 to go in properly. And we get that, which as we see makes sense because we see our five we would have this, the 10,000, zero, exactly, which also makes sense, seeing as if we did it with the decimals, we'd have to move it, one, two. We start where the decimal is, not just at the end, in which case, ah, sorry, in which case, we would get point zero 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 five. Same thing down here. So they're all the same. Last percentage we're gonna look at is 370%. So 
So now this percent is more than 100. So we're going to get our fraction to be 370 over 100. Again, we need to simplify this. Now the easiest thing to do is just to pull this big number out here. We then pull it out and we get 3 and 70 hundredths. Again, my favorite way to cancel things, just cancel our zeros. So then at the end, we get 3 and 7 tenths. Great job. As our decimal, like I said, there's two ways to long divide, or two ways to get it. Now here is the easy way. One thing with long division is we already know it's going to start with a 3. We already know it's going to start with a 3. So we can just wait for our answer and leave it there. Then we do our division 7 into 10. It goes in 0 times. We put our decimal, which is actually what's going to go there. And then we put it in 70. It goes in 7 times. We get 0. So that becomes 3.7. And we already knew that. Again, if we did it based on the decimal form, we'd move it over 1, 2, and we would get 3.7. Yet again, same thing. Let's look at this a little bit differently. Now we have a fraction. This fraction is already the most simplified it can be. The easiest thing we can do from here is to try to make it, well, we could try to make it over 100, which might be a little bit difficult because we might not always have a fraction that goes easily into 100. So the best way to do is to make it into a decimal first and then into a fraction. Like I said, we already know our decimal is going to start with a 3 point something because we've got our big number, our integer being 3. Then we just do our long division again. So we have 2 as our div uh, dividend, 5 as our divisor. 5 cannot go into 2, but it can go into 24 times. So we get our answer as 3.4. Then, in order to make it into a percent, we move our decimal over 1, 2. And the way I like to remember it is that we're moving it towards the percent sign. So now we get 340%. As we saw, we were moving our decimal towards that side where the percent is going, towards that side where the percent is going. When we move it to the decimal, we're moving it away from the percentage sign. Again, here's this fraction. Now we know our numerator is smaller than our denominator, so we know our decimal is going to start with a zero. We still, we got to do our long division. 8, 11. 11 cannot go into 8, so it's zero. We already knew that. Put our decimal here. 11 goes into 80 seven times. That's 77. Here we get a 3. We bring this down. Goes into it two times. 22. 8. As we remember from earlier with our repeating decimals lesson, we see here we got an 80, and here we got an 80, which means this is going to repeat forever. So we get 0 0.72 going on forever. Again, we want to move it towards the percent sign. 1, 2, towards the percent sign, and we get our answer to be 72%. It goes on forever, but that's just what we're going to pretend. So now we have a decimal, 8.3. The easiest thing to do here, once again, is just to make it into a percentage, to make it into a percentage. Once again, to do that, we move it over 1, 2, towards the percentage sign, and we get our percent to be 830%. To make that into a decimal, we're now going to have 830 over 100. That simplifies down to 8 and 30 hundredths, or we can cancel it out and get 8 and 3 tenths. Just to check our math, let's long division this. We're going to get 8 point, we got our 3 and our 10, 0 goes there, we get 3, 30, 0, 8.3. Same thing. Everywhere we go, all the same thing. We can try this again here. We move it over twice towards the percentage sign. We get our answer to be 
26% or 26 over 100. We can simplify this again to get 13 over 50. Now we've already got our answers, but yet again, I want to prove to you that we can do this. 13, 50, here we go. It goes in zero times. We do here, we get two, it's 100. We get 30, we bring down our next zero, and then it goes in six times with 300. Excellent, once again, look at that. That's 0.26, it's the same everywhere. We'll do this one last problem here. Once again, it's easiest to go from decimals to percentages to fractions. That's the easiest way to go, and I'll show you the cycle at the end. So we move our decimal over, one, two, to get two. 3.8%, 3.8%. See, it doesn't always move to the end, 3.8%. As such, we get 3.8 over 100. Like earlier, we can't have a decimal, so I've moved this over and I move this over. So we end up getting 38 out of 1,000. 38 out of 1,000. Now I still have to simplify that. I still have to simplify it, so I end up dividing by two and I'm gonna get 19 out of 500, which is gonna be our answer, 19 out of 500. And just to check our work, cause I make us do that, 19, 500, you know, zero, zero, zero. Here we are, it goes in a total of, actually that, that one, it goes in, a total of three times at one five zero zero. Here we get four hundred. We put our next zero down. Four thousand five hundred goes into four thousand eight times. Hey, look at that. Zero point three eight zero. Or, uh, yeah, point zero three eight point zero three eight three point eight percent. Nineteen over five hundred. All of these are the same thing. So the easiest way we know percent can go to percent, it's the same thing. Percent can go to fraction by putting it over to 100 and percent can go to decimal simply by moving our decimal. We already know fraction can go to fraction, but it's a little bit harder to go the other ways. The easiest way for it to go is fraction to decimal. Fraction to decimal because there we do our long division. As such, we know that decimals can go to decimals and decimals can easily go to percents. Plus, decimals can go to fractions by remembering whatever place the end number is. For example, in the tenths place or in the hundredths place. That's the number that we put it over with our decimal. So the hardest one that we're really dealing with here is fractions because they don't work to go to percents as easily. So our chart when we have this, if we have a fraction, my suggestion for you is to go from fraction to decimal and then to percentage as opposed to trying to go straight from fraction to percent. Hope you enjoyed this little recap lesson and good luck on your homework.